There is a lot about text I could go through in this hour, but I am just going to cover the very basics and hopefully give you the skills that you need to continue learning and figuring um, the rest out. So to put text on our page, we need to draw a text box. We use the type tool for that, which is here in the toolbar. Draw yourself a text box with that tool and you can see that if you draw that text box so that it sits exactly on top of your guidelines, you won't be able to see the text box edges anymore. If you'd like to resize that text box, you will have to go back to your selection tool to do that because the type tool only types and draws text boxes pretty much. I'm going to type in my heading. and then you can change the typeface up here and the size in here you've also got styles like italics or bold or any of those so I'm just going to go ahead and, and change my typeface and size So more needs to be done to this text box before it looks quite like our example here, but I will fix that all up later. I'm going to move on to the columns now. And so I'm going to draw this first column. Again, I'm just going to leave it off the bottom there so you can see it. Here's my second. And there is my third. I'll have to fix that one up. I don't do. And that'll do for that one. So I've got three separate text boxes here now. One, two, three. And I'm going to put what's called placeholder text in this first one so I can play with the formatting and the typeface and all those things. And so I can show you. So if you'd like to put placeholder text in a text box, just right click in your text box, find fill with placeholder text. And you can see now filled it with bits of um, scrap Latin. Now there's a few formatting things we can do right now to make it look more like our example. I'm not going to bother um, playing with the typeface because you obviously know how to change it now, um, but I will show you things like letting, spacing, kerning um, and some paragraph controls. So um, if you'd like to edit the formatting of your, any paragraph you need to highlight the body of text just like before. And I'm going to start using these character and paragraph panes on the right here just so you get used to using them. So one of the things that we can do to change the amount of space that our body of text takes up is to change the letting. And letting is the space between each of the lines in our paragraph. Um, by default it's 14.4 but we can change that can see I'm reducing that space and now increasing it. So we can see kind of how letting works. I'm sure you wouldn't be doing it that much, um, but if you needed to squish stuff onto your page a little bit more, letting will definitely help you do that. Let's change that to its default. Um, you can also change the spacing or the tracking. Now that is the distance between each of your characters. By default that one's on zero. And you can see how big we can make that. And of course you can make it small as well. So if spacing changes the space in between all of our characters, this one here, kerning, that one will change the space in between just two. So you can see right now I am just changing the space between the I and the B. can't see that very well because obviously my tracking is really massive. Let's bring that back in a bit. There we go. And we can see how that works. 
Um, that's definitely used more by people like graphic designers and whatnot, though. Let me just get rid of this. Okay, so now that I've made my text really, really big and spaced out, um, you might be able to see this red square with a little cross in it. Um, that is now at the bottom right hand corner of my text box. That wasn't there before. It's a warning text overset. So we can use this one to link our text boxes together, which is very, very handy. So you need to make sure you're on the selection tool to do that. Click on that red box and you'll see your text attached to your cursor. Drop it in your the next box that you'd like um, your first to flow into. And you can see, see I've still got that red box there because there's even more text that we can't see. And I can do that again for my third text box. So now all of my text boxes are linked. And I can go ahead and fix up the ridiculous spacing I've got going. And I'll put in some more placeholder text so that you can see the formatting. So that's some basic character formatting. If we move in and have a look at paragraph, you can see we've got some alignment settings up the top here. You will be using that, I'm sure. The most common one you'll see in a lot of magazines is this one here. It's called Fully Justified with Last Line Aligned Left. And it looks like this. So we can see it starts on the left and it finishes on the right, except for that last line of the paragraph. That one is left aligned. So you'll either see that one or just a normal ragged right edge. My page that I'm mimicking, it uses that fully justify with last line aligned left. So we'll stick with that one. There's also some options down here that you'll probably want to use as tabs. Um, and there's this one, which will indent the first line of your paragraph. And my example does use that. You can see that I've got an indent of, on each paragraph of about three millimeters. So I'm going to add that in here. There we go. Um, that one does the same on the last line on the right hand side. And here we've got um, an option to change the space in between our paragraphs. So this one changes the space before paragraph and this one changes the space after. I know, they look pretty much the same. Let's go in here. I'll need to just take out that indenting on this first paragraph. There we go, it has to change the other ones. And this option here will let you do a drop cap. So if I increase that to 4, say, that means that that letter H is the length of or the height of four of my other lines. You can also choose whether you'd like hyphenation enabled or not. Um, my example does not use hyphenation so I won't be using it. And there's just one more thing I'd like to show you about text formatting um, and that is in the text box formatting. So if you right click on a text box and find text frame options you'll see this thing called um, inset spacing. And this is fantastic because it kind of gives you margin around your text box because our example obviously have spaces in between our columns but I don't at the moment because um, if you were to use grid lines to put your teeny little spaces in there you'd double your work very quickly. So you can use your inset spacing to give you a bit of room here. I just actually want to do it on this one. So I'm doing that on the middle text box here and I'm making sure I'm previewing it and I'd like some space on the left on about three millimeters and you can see it's given me a space of about three millimeters on the left of that text box. I'd also like about four on the top and I'm going to do the same thing to the right text box. And that's the very basics of putting text on your page in InDesign. Of course, as you can see, there's lots of other little tiny um, buttons and options for you to fiddle with, but that's definitely enough to get you started in figuring out the rest for yourself.